you haven't watched the previous video already, go ahead and do that so that way we can get up to speed because we're going to be using the interaction system that I made in the last video. So let's just go ahead and see what we have here, what the finished product will be. So we have this thing that I just call a door, although you could make it do pretty much whatever you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be a door. This is just to showcase the flexibility of it. So why don't we also set this? As we can see, it turns, moves up, and scales. Anyways, let's get to it. In my blueprints folder, the same one where I put the interfaces at, I'm going to make a folder called level design. And this is just going to be all of the actors that we're going to be making in the future. So things like doors, buttons, elevators, probably not even elevators actually, because we've already got that uh, sussed out here. So why don't we go ahead and just do actor, call it BP underscore door. So go ahead and open up this bad boy. And you see, I don't have to dock the window anymore because it's already done that once before. So we go to our class settings and then we go to implemented interfaces and then go find BPI interaction. This is why you need to watch the previous video because I'll show you how to get that all there. Anyways, let's go ahead and remove all this stuff we don't need. Let's just go ahead and get this implemented here. And we're going to go ahead and move that down there. Let's go ahead and make a couple of custom events too while we're at it. So let's do, whoops. Custom event. Uh, we're not going to name that just yet. We're just going to get three of these done. So just like this. All right, let's name this one Hoggle Door. Let's name this one Open Door. And let's name this one Close Door. And let's go ahead and make some variables. Let's get three variables made. Let's call this one is open. Let's call this one open transform. And let's call the last one close transform. And is open can be left as a Boolean, but the open and close transforms obviously need to have this transform type. And go ahead and save that and compile it. So our object here, which we're just going to call a door, can have two states being open or close. And the best thing for that is a Boolean variable, which is what we have is open. And then we have these two transform variables because it lets this object be generic enough and be versatile enough that we can use it for a number of scenarios. Obviously, if we wanted it to be like a, a door on its hinges, we could just have it rotate. If we wanted it to be like a garage door, we could just have it move up and down. And for whatever a scale might be good for, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but uh, you can also have it be for that as well. We'll probably go ahead and rename this class because BP door is too limiting for what we're actually going to use it for, or rather what it can be used for. At any rate, let's just leave it how it is and we'll think about renaming this stuff later. So the first thing that we're going to do is organize our variables. So if we click on the variable, we can come to the details panel off to the right. And this thing in category, you can actually type in this. So let's call it properties. I just realized that's the wrong place to put that. Because we're never going to access this. So at least from the editor. So we can just put that outside of properties. And we're going to go ahead and click this I icon here on the open transform which makes it public and it's able to be accessed from the editor so if we come into here we can see oh properties onto the details panel and we have the location rotation and the scale so for any other thing that we would like to access let's say we want to have the uh, object door be you know start open or closed we could also have a boolean for that in the properties and if we wanted to change the speed of the object, we could also have a float for the speed. And that could also go into properties because we would want to set this before the map begins. We're not going to do that just yet. We're going to get the core functionality of the door set up first. So 
because this close transform will not be able to be changed from the editor, you're probably thinking, how are we actually going to change it at all so it doesn't just go to zero, zero, zero? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to set this, and I just held all and I dragged it out there to get the set. Control dragging does the getter. We're going to plug the exec pam into here. And then for the close transform, we're actually just going to get the current actor location, or rather where the actor is when the level starts. So we can go ahead and put that into there. So now we have this variable set up. And then in toggle door, we are going to get the is open variable. We're actually going to get a branch, put the exec pin into there, plug the pin into there. Go ahead and just clean it up a little bit. And if we're already open, we should go ahead and close the door. And if we're not open, we would want to go ahead and open the door if I can spell. What we're going to do first is, whenever we do open and close door, is we're just going to set it to be the opposite of what it is. I say the opposite, but uh, really what we're doing is we're just saying, if we're open, say we're open. If we're closed, say we're closed. Let's go ahead and search for the timeline, because we're going to need this to smoothly glide or open and close or interpolate, if you will, from the close to the open transform. So I'm just going to call it TL underscore open close. I don't know if the prefix is necessary, but I'm kind of used to labeling assets as such. And then we're going to go ahead and put these pins into here. Normally, what I would do is do play from start and reverse from end for something like this. But you will see why shortly we may not want to do that. So let's go ahead and on the update, let's go ahead and do set actor uh, transform. Get that pulled out here. And we're going to get the lerp transform node. Get that right there. And then for the open transform, let's plug that into B. And then for the close transform, let's plug that into A. And then you're probably wondering, what is this alpha thing here for? So let's say we have two points on a plane. We have point A at 0, 0, and then we have point B at 5, 3. We would draw a line from one to the other, and that would be our that would be the linear part of the linear interpolation. And then the alpha just says, where along the line are we? So I believe what this is is a... Um, percentage so one would be at b and zero would be at a so you could think of it 0 0.5 would be the halfway point between a and b so how we actually control this is from the timeline that we have here so if we go ahead and open it change the length to one and add a float track we can right click into here we can add a couple of keys and let's also rename the uh, track to alpha because that's what this timeline controls and then we can click this point here, set the time and value to zero. And then the second point, we're going to make it one, one. Sorry, you have to click enter on that. One, one. So we can click these buttons here. So you see, straight line, linear, line, ha. Words are very predictable. Let's go ahead and drag this into here. And I think we'll just drag that there. Ah, looks so clean. Anyways, so what will happen is as this timeline updates, it'll take our point, the percentage on the interpolated transforms, and it'll take that and put it as the new transform of our actor. So that's how we get the smoothness. And let's go ahead and go to event interaction and let's do toggle door. If we compile it and we go into viewport, whoa, I have never seen this before. That's a, I think that's a bug. Anyways, if we add a cube, go ahead and put that there, drag it on the default scene route, and then now we have this here. Unfortunately, I really wish there was some way that I could do this easily from the uh, editor. Uh, I could do it in the uh, constructor. However, anytime you update it, it would, um, mess with this and that would be to um set the open transform just to be where this one is at but unfortunately you cannot so what i typically do instead is thankfully the scale is already at one one so 
if we go ahead and copy the location and paste it into here, we can just move this and then go there, there. Oh, look at that. How nice. Goes up and down. Well, that's pretty nice, but said we wanted to have the door start closed or open. We get the choice for that. Well, now we can have another property. Go ahead and make it a type of Boolean, or sorry, of type Boolean, and let's call it start open. And we can set this one to be public. So we can drag this up into properties now. And then we're going to do a branch. So if you hold B and click, you can get a branch very easily. And then we're going to control drag start open into here. And let's actually drag this down, give us a little more room here. And then if we decide we do want to start open, let's just copy that node, do this. So now we take this. If we do not want to start open, we use our close transform, which is basically just how it functions now. And then if we want to start open, we use the open transform. So if we go ahead and compile it and run it, we can see it still works fine. And then if we, oh look, our little things here, because we've made it public. So now if we have it start open, it starts at the bottom. Ah, but what's this? It's it's weird and it's being like bugged. Well, actually it's just because we aren't um, setting this after the fact. So if we start open, we want to make sure we're open. Or better yet, better yet what we could do is um, we'll go here we could actually simplify this into a single line. We can say our is open boolean is equal to the start open variable. So uh, let's just move this back here. So is open is equal to start open. And this is only an event begin play. So let's do this. And then if we compile it and run it, we'll see. All right, nice. Oh, but. That's weird. More, more bugged. It's not working like how it should. Well, the answer for that is actually pretty easy. So if we go to our timeline here, we'll say, you know, this is our point A right here, and this is our point B. So because we're starting closed, we're actually at zero, zero. And then if we reverse, well, we're already at zero, zero. So we're just immediately there. So that's why typically you might want to do reverse from end or play from start. However, we don't actually have to do that. Because what we can do is if we expand the components thing on the left side of the screen, we get that. And then we can do, that was my clock for the half hour thing, even though it's running seven minutes fast. But if we go into the timeline component, we can do set new time. And then our new time can just be one. So if we decide we wanted to start open, we can set the timeline's new time to one. So now if we compile it, and we go run it. Ah, it works. Yay. How amazing. So I've read a lot of the book, The C Sharp Player's Guide. And one thing that really helped me learn more about programming from that book were the challenges in there. So basically, you learn about something like a struct or a class. And you would have something on your own that you had to do to further reinforce what we've just done here. So my challenge to you all is this. I want you to create a variable to represent the speed of the door whenever it goes from its open to its close state. So what you'll have to do is make it and then find a way to set it for this object. I won't tell you where it's set at, but in the next video that I make, I'll show you the answer at the end of that video. So stay tuned for that. Happy learning, and I hope you all have fun. Also, I have a Fiverr account. Please hire me so I can make some more money. Bye.